Well, not as good as you, I imagine. But uh, first of all, congratulations on the victory. You know, all week you, you talked like you had already beaten Michael Venom Page. You know, like when I beat him, when I get through him. Now that you are actually through Michael Venom Page, what are the emotions now? I'm fucking pissed I didn't land that submission in the first round. I am. I'm living. But you know what? I showed so much evolution today. I, I frustrated. Like, I snake charmed a snake charm in my mind. I made him frustrated. He likes people to do that dance with him, to move, to keep that flow, that rhythm, and he works well off that rhythm, that timing. I, I hit him with stealth mode. I walked him down, I prayed him. You know, he didn't have a lot of success. I didn't have a lot of success on the feet. I wobbled him in the second round with a right hand. I seen his eyes go, and I was like, patience. I've been saying all week, I said it to Damon, I said it to Diego, I said it to everyone on my team. The key to beating Michael Venom Page was patience. Because he will give me the gaps and he will make the mistakes because I will make, them, I will make him make the mistakes. This might seem like a silly question. Uh, Mike, obviously, MVP has one, like two losses. Mm -hmm. What did you see that all of his other opponents outside of like Lima and I can't even remember the... the How many calf kicks you see me throw? Yeah. Out of the, and I will say this now, the two single greatest people in the world that have calf kicks are me and Alexi Pereira. I didn't throw any today in him. I threw one behind the height of the knee because he just turned a little bit too much and I pulled the trigger on it. What he wants you to do is he wants you to throw that lead leg. He wants you to throw that calf kick because when you throw the calf kick, I'm going to stand up for you because I need to explain this because people aren't going to get this. When, when, he throws the, when you throw the calf kick, as you go to turn your foot and open up, all your weight is on your left leg. If he just touches me, I go back. And that's why when you look at him against Douglas Lima in one and two, and he blitzed through them, it wasn't so much that he met them with so much power. It was because Lima left himself open because of balance issues. And for me, I've told everyone this, I mean it. I have the smartest fight IQ in the game. So for me, it was patience. My opportunities for success will come. A couple jabs, a couple kicks, a couple spinny shit to have some fun, but just keep them guessing. It was patience. I didn't even shoot for a takedown, I don't believe. I just caught him. I, I outsmarted him. I am livid. Livid about that first round. Damien and me have already spoke about it. We need to go back. We need to work on the little details because I'm livid. I had it perfect. Our game plan, we knew it. If you watch him against Logan Story, he takes the overhook. He gives you the back. Most wrestlers will go front on and try flatten you. I was like, nah, fuck that. You see this face? I grilled myself off the cage to just turn his head. So I turned his arm and took his back. I was like, fuck it. I'm going to cut myself up a little bit. I'm going to leave myself bruised. But it'll be worth it if I take his back because he's not getting me off it. It shows the evolution of my growth, of my, of my skill set. And in such a short time. Damien, what are we working, like six months together? And I'm, I'm proving how good I am. And I'm training with that man two, three, four times a week. I'm going to be so dangerous. I've told you this. Domination is coming on the feet and on the ground. I, well, I don't know how I ended up on the ground today. I locked my triangle up. I went, fuck it. Let me try cut him up. Let me try hit him with some elbows, cut him open. But I'm so active. For me, if anyone puts me on my back, I know how to get up. I know how to get up and I know how to stay safe. So I was like, let's try to take advantage of it. So then I'll, I'll phrase it like this. You've obviously clearly broke down what the submission attempt mm -hmm. in the first round. Why didn't you? Why do you think you didn't submit him with that? My, my, my own minor mistakes, I believe. Again, I, I will say I'm the best in the world. I will also say when I make mistakes, I just couldn't get the grip. It was on. I was under his chin. I had everything right. I just couldn't. And I spoke already. Here, here's the fucking beauty of my... Sorry for cursing so much. Here's the beauty of my world. After the fight... Damian Maya, Gilbert Burns, Charles Oliveira. All three of them are talking to me about the submission. How can I not grow as a fighter when those three of my friends help me? And Gilbert's like, you need to pull the elbow back. Damian's like, you need to just change the hand position. Charles is like, it doesn't matter, you won. He's like, it doesn't matter. He's like, you won. I was saying, patience, let go, hit him. So I'm surrounded by people who are going to help me achieve greatness, people who are out here and want to help me succeed, and I, I'm just grateful. And when you, when you took his back in the third round, right at the end when yeah. he was standing, the commentary was shocked at what MVP wasn't doing. Uh, like he wasn't trying to shimmy you off or mm -hmm. forward. Were you surprised that he wasn't doing things that like seemed obvious? Yeah, no, I think the position I had, look, 
I love when people attack my back, so I knew exactly what he could do. He could try to grab the head, shake his hips. I had too good of a body lock in. I had one hand underhooked, so I knew I could be free with the other hand. And literally at the end, when I knew I'd just gotten a bit too high, at the exact time I was doing it, I hear Damien say, take the underhook. I'm like, okay. And I was, I was trying to upset his rhythm, trying to upset it. MVP is very good at anti-jiu-jitsu. If you watch any of his fights, he holds people's wrists, he locks people apart, he just tries to suffocate any success on the ground to get the fight back on the feet where he has success. I stopped him from doing that today with activity, knowing that, planning for that. And today I went out there and I had some fun and I, look, I showed a different part of my game that I didn't necessarily need to nor want to show off today, but the world is the way it is and I had some fun. And then last thing on MVP, uh, it sh obviously there was things said in the buildup, but then it showed you backstage with your son, and mm -hmm. he was kind of playing with him, and mm -hmm. then you guys spoke after. So what did you say to him after, and what was going on backstage? I think it caught a lot of people off guard. when. He so the first thing was, my son is the most lovely little boy on the planet, and he's seen MVP, and MVP came to me, came, shouted over, he's like, you got a beautiful son. My son put his arms out and asked him for a hug. I'm never going to say no, so I picked him up, I brought him over. If I bring him over to someone, he's safe. He's not just going to walk over and hug someone around me. Daddy's got you. I've got you. No matter what, you're safe. I'm never going to tell my son he's not allowed to hug someone in the world. I think a hug is always welcomed. You know, I'm an emotional human being. I always welcome a hug, and I've always been turned told, never turn away a hug. And I will treat that to my kid as well. When it comes to what was said, the build-up, everything I said was factual and true. I, I, I'm not lying. I don't lie. There was money offered, and it's filthy, and I think it's cheating, and I think it's disgusting in the sport. But I always respect someone who's willing to stand in an octagon with me. I didn't have to fight tonight. I could have waited. I could have waited. Connor's out. I could have waited, but I'm not that person. I want to fight. I want to fight everyone and anyone. I am on this mission to become one of the greatest to ever do it. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I'm excited to see what the future has. At official weigh-ins, we saw you having a pretty spirited conversation mm -hmm. with the commission. Was that about the, what you alluded to? A hundred percent. Absolutely. It was like, you can't... Look, the way I looked at it is, how many times has he done it in his career prior to? How many times has he gone into a fight with an unfair advantage? If, as a fighter, if you ask me two questions, Ian, would you rather be on juice or would you rather have knowledge? What's more powerful? Knowledge, knowledge beats everything, right? So that, to me, makes me think that it's fucking cheating. We do all these drug tests, we do all this stuff to go, you're clean, you're not doing drugs, but someone come out here and offer money for my information for my team, thank God shoot the box is fucking rock solid. Thank God shoot the box go, no, we shut it down, and we locked everything down and nothing went out. We had a blackout on Instagram and stuff, on socials. For me, I said to the commissioner, they were like, look, there's no rules against it. I was like, well, let's make sure there is, because it's cheating and it's dirty. And we can't be doing all this stuff when it comes to testing and making sure the sport's clean and then people are being dirty in other regards. So let's make a rule. And also, has anyone ever won money on it? Has there ever been any side bets on it? If you know what I know and I'm putting money on it because we have inside information, it's fucking dirty. So that's where I think when I said there should be suspension for life, I believe that if you go check the bank accounts and you go check the bookies, I guarantee there's been some money won somewhere along the line and that's filthy and that's cheating to me. But I will sit here and say, I am grateful to MVP that he took the fight. A lot of people said no, he said yes. So with that anger and that frustration, there was also gratitude and respect for standing at Octagon with me. So much respect to him and his team. After battle, there's nothing but respect. And he, he deserves it, he earned it. And last one for me, obviously, you've made it known you want to be on Connor's return. Always. Michael Chandler was here. He said he's expecting to hear something maybe next week or within the week, next week or two. You're going to have your notifications on to see when that's announced when Connor comes back. Now, fuck that. I'm straight back, but on my Brazil phone, I ain't seeing shit. I'm going back into the, into the darkness of nothing. Um, I'll be there. I, look, I'm going to have a chat with Hunter and Dana later on and figure out what's next. There's some big names, there's some cool matchups. You know, there's Shavkat, 18 and 0 undefeated. I'd love to get my hands on him. I've trained him. I have nothing but respect for the guy, but I want to be the first guy to take his own, and I know I can do it. I've just beat the fastest guy in the division, other than me. When it comes to striking and skills, so I can do it. When it comes to grappling, we've seen the growth that I have. I'm excited to go out there and prove it against someone like him. Ian, over yeah. here, uh, according to the UFC, now eight fights, longest active winning win streak in the UFC welterweight division. How does that feel? 
26 years of age, undefeated, breaking records. Whether people like it or not, I'm out here doing my thing, and it makes me happy to put a smile on my face. Uh, do you have any evidence that you're planning on publicizing as it pertains to MVP and those allegations? I have a full... You can turn around and look at that man, Diego Lima, over there. He has... It. He was... This man, listen to this, right? Let me tell you the story of how this happened, how we found out. We went and we, we were doing some separate training in a different gym where we had locked it all off and we were doing that anyway. And Damien comes and he, I swear to God, he's pumping full of sweat. And he's like, he's like, Ian, Layla, Layla, come here, come here. And he's like to me, I just got pulled over by the police. I was driving without a helmet on my motorbike on the phone. He's like, I just found out that someone was trying to infiltrate, shoot the box. I had to ring everyone, lock it all down. He was like, this is ridiculous. He was like, we need to be super, super safe. And he, he was like, look, he shows me all the messages, shows me all the screenshots. And come here, I don't need to put this out in the world. My, my word is my bond. I tell the truth, I have no reason to stay up here and lie or, or, or spit fucking bullshit. I know, and did MVP deny it at the press conference? He went, oh, anyways. He didn't sit there and go, you're full of shit. He knew exactly what he did. And if you look in his jiu-jitsu coach's eyes, you can see the truth. I don't need to publicize it unless there's going to be that formal investigation for suspension of the teams and suspension of, you know, betting odds. Then I'll give it out, and I would love to follow through with that because I think keeping this sport clean is important. Are you going to pay Diego's fine for uh, being caught on the phone on his motorcycle, no helmet? Diego, Diego has the mouth of someone who can get out of everything in the world. He knows how to slip. Look, he's a lawyer at first, right? He knows what he needs to do to just negotiate out of any problem in the world. He's a great man, great heart, and he means nothing but good. Just two more for me. One, uh, I, I agree that you were more active on the ground in the third round when you were on your back. Were there any concerns, though, with uh, you know, the first two rounds being split, that optics, the judges might see him in top position, and he might get the round if you didn't get back up? No. I, I, firstly, listen, I can get up whenever I want. It was me who closed the body triangle. As a striker, as someone who my entire career has been planning on people taking me down and getting back up, I can get back up from anyone in the world. That's not an issue. As I've said earlier on, Damien Meyer, Gilbert Burns, Charles Oliveira, these are some of the best grapplers we've ever seen. I can get up against all of them. It's not an issue. Tonight, I don't know how I ended up there. It was just, I think it was a, a clash. I ended up on bottom. I closed, the, I closed the triangle. I went, fuck it. Let's see if I can cut him open. I instantly went, GSP, Michael Bisming. Let's see if we can pump blood down his forehead and make him leave him there with a mark that he'll remember. But I was more active. I landed more elbows. I landed more shots. And then I went, all right, let's stand up. That was my decision. And last one for me, how would you respond to some people who might criticize you saying 29-28 against MVP, considering how much you sort of boasted about the quality of your skill set relative to his? At the end of the day, it was two to one. I don't care what people say. I got my hand raised, 15-0, undefeated, as you said, the eight, the eight wins in a row, the longest active win streak in welterweight division. People can say what they want. At the end of the day, I'm living my life, get my hand raised and doing what's doing best. And I got paid in full. Also uh, tied number third with Leon for all time, welterweight one street. So there you go. All time, third, 26 years of age. I am by far the youngest man in the division, and I am far the most talented. And I also, I put fear into other people because of my strike, and now because of the ability that I have in jiu-jitsu. I am so well-rounded, and the more and more I fight, the more and more fucked everyone else is, because I'm just going to grow and evolve at such a rapid rate that no one is going to be able to catch me. Ian? Straight back here. Go ahead, boy. What's uh, up? Congratulations, man. Appreciate you, man. Is Colby Covington officially in the rear view after a victory like tonight? If Colby Covington wants to dance, the offer was always there. It's on him to show up and be a man of his word. I believe he's running scared for his life because he sees me as the end of his at the as the end of his career. Too fast, too young, too pretty, and I will run through him. You're in the red locker room. Were you aware of everything going on with Dan Ige stepping up for Brian Ortega? Was that in your locker? Bro, no, it wasn't in my locker. I seen it on the, I see. I was like looking at this. I was like, what's the commissioner doing? I'm in a room with 
Is the weight, are they checking his weight again? And I went, oh, shit. That, I was, that's what fighters are made of. I said that same thing. My, my manager, Lloyd, is here. He can vouch for this. I said the exact same thing when it was um, Wonder Boy. I was like, get me a private jet. I will fly overnight, and I will fight the day of. I was so game to do it. I was getting my neck tattoo. I was like, I'll fucking shut this shit down now, and I will go. I will do that because I am so game to fight. For me... You got to give Dan Ige a massive, massive applause. He saved an event tonight, and I just hope he went out there and got what he deserved. And then final question. The UFC posted oh, yeah? that video, you uh, meeting with Layla, your very dapper dress son. <laughs> I mean, can you put into words what that moment was after a victory like tonight? <laughs> I said to the UFC security beforehand, I said, right, here's how it's going to go. Either you bring them to me for a cuddle and a kiss, or I'm fucking going up. And no one's stopping me. And he went, right, she's there. Give her a code, give her a kiss. Do not pull her back. I was like, I won't. You gave me your word. You did what you did. All I wanted was a cuddle and a kiss. That's the most important thing to me after win. My family means everything to me. I'm a family man. I love them with all my heart. And I just want to give them a cuddle and a kiss and know that daddy did them proud. Congrats. Ian, Ian over you. here. Um, so you mentioned Shavkat as a potential opponent. I know you also on Media Day mentioned he might get the winner of Bilal mm -hmm. and Leon. Um, is Kamaru Usman a, a possible opponent? Like, you mentioned there's huge fights, but there's a lot of fights that are booked. JDM's injured, right? Uh -huh. So um, and any other names that come to mind? Any of them. I literally, I'm, not, I'm not picky. You've got Usman. I don't think Usman wants to fight me. I don't think Usman wants to come out here and fight someone who's that fast. I think he'd much rather have an easier stylistic matchup. And, like, for example, he's been talking about fighting Wonderboy. Wonderboy's older now. He's not as fast as I am. He's not as well-rounded as I am. I do think, when I give examples, you've got guys who've dominated the division for so long. Would I love to get my hands on Usman? Absolutely. Would I love to get my hands on Kobe Covington? Absolutely. I think they will not accept it because they will run scared because, again, a younger, up-and-coming fighter, the future of the division, when you lose to him, you're on the end of your career. That's it. You go down and down and down. You've got people like Shavkat. That fight excites me so much. Shavkat's incredibly talented. I have nothing but respect for the guy. I've trained him. I've shared the, I've shared the ring with him. I've sh I've, we've hit each other. We've trained with each other. I have nothing but respect for the dude. It's purely out of, I don't want anyone else to be him before me. He's 18 and now I'm 15, you know, let's go out there and put it on a show and let's see who's really better. But to answer your question, any of them. You're the second well to, welterweight to ever to start 8-0 in the UFC and the other is Kamar Usman. Would you say you're on the same title trajectory as he was? I mean, there's no reason to argue that right now. Whether you want to talk about stylistically and the traits that we possess, at the end of the day, whatever people say, I'm on out there and I'm doing what I need to do to get my hand raised. Am I pissed that I won by a decision? Absolutely. But that's on me to go back and work on with my team and evolve and grow. But even in that frustration and irritation that I have inside myself because I want that finish, I've gone out there in my last two fights, I, three fights, I dominated Neil Magny, the most winningest welterweight of all time, and I made him look like he's never fought. I went out there against the hardest puncher in the division against Jeff Neal, and I hit him with everything. I cracked him with some knees to the face, some kicks to the body that I've seen grown men curl up, and he ate them and went, ugh. I was like, fuck, this is going to be a long night. And I went out there today against, in what I called, I wrote it in my book, I can say, I'll post it later on Instagram, I called MVP a ball ache. He is someone who's just going to be irritating, who's going to, you have to be uber patient with and uber focused with because he wants to set traps for you. So what I did tonight was I set traps for him to fall into and then I took advantage of them. For me, I am, I am on my road to destiny to be one of the greatest of all time. I'm gonna do that by any means necessary and I don't care how it gets done. In 10, 10 years time, my name is gonna be in that go conversation. You're gonna, who's the greatest of all time? You're gonna say, John Jones, GSP, Anderson Silva, Ian Machado Gary. I'm going to have my name in that conversation because it's opinion based. If you're Brazilian, you'll say Anderson Silva. If you're American, you might say John Jones. We could all sit here and have all of our opinions. As long as my name's in that conversation, I've had a successful career.
one more. Um, when you when you when you're comparing sorry, for Kamaru, Kamaru on his rise at one point was kind of struggling to get fights too because the reward might not have, like you, wasn't worth the risk. And he would step up and he weighed in as a backup against Darren Till and Tyron Woodley. Would you ever want to weigh in as a backup for these title fights? We've got Manchester in, what, three weeks? I'll be there. I've already told the UFC prior to that I will be willing to stand in. I know there's no one else above me ready to go. I know there's not because there was no one else above me to fucking sign the fight with me because I had so many conversations with Hunter and the guys at the UFC. There's no one else above me except Kobe, and he said that he was running. So no one else was available. I will be there in Manchester. I will stand on that scales, and if the opportunity rises, I will go out there and get my hand raised.